Hi! Well, I can finally sit down when I do math, but anyway, I have three logarithm questions for you guys in this video, and they are from the AMC or the ME questions, right? So here's the first one. We have log base 8 of A plus log base 4 of B squared is equal to 5, and log base 8 of B plus log base 4 of A squared is equal to 7, and the question is asking us to find out the value of A times B. So, as always, please pause the video and try this first. But I'm not going to go away because I don't have too much space. But anyway, go ahead, pause the video and do it. Alright, so now here's the deal. If the question is asking us to find out the value for A times B, then you should not try to find out the value for A or B individually, right? So this is how we can work this out. Notice, for the first part, they have the same base. Likewise for this and that, right? I think it's a good idea to just add up the equations, and you will see that this plus that, because they have the same base, so of course you can just multiply the insides, right? So this is going to be log base 8 of a times b, and that is a good sign because we want the b right here, right? Next, we do the same thing, we add log base 4, and I will just write down a squared first, and then times b squared, and that's equal to 5 plus 7, which is of course equal to 12. Well, for this part though, both of them have power 2, so we can bring the 2 to the front, and that's nice. In the meantime, I will also use the change of base formula to take care of some business. So, for this, I will just write down regular log of a b over log base 8. And this log can be whatever you want, but I will just use the regular log. And I will put down the 2 in the front first, and then on the top, we have log of a b over log base 4. So again, change base formula, and that's, of course, still equal to 12. Hmm, can we somehow combine the fractions? And the answer to that is, yes, we can. Because for the 8, this is the same as saying 2 to the 3rd power. Likewise, for the 4, it's the same as 2 to the 2nd power. And I still have my blue marker. We can put the 3 all the way to the front. Likewise, the 2 all the way to the front as well, right? So in another word, this is log a b over 3 in the front, and then we have log 2, and then plus, this is 2 log a b over this 2 in the front, and then log 2, and that's equal to 12. And this is so nice, because this and that cancel, but I need to get the common denominator, so let me multiply by 3 here and also 3 right here, so we can combine some fractions. And when we do that, of course, they have the same fraction, same denominator. On the top, we can just combine. This is 1 and that's 3, so we have altogether 4 log a b over 3 log 2. And that's, of course, still equal to 12. And now let's just go ahead and do this. Multiply this to the other side, that will be 36. Divide the 4 on both sides, so you see this is log a b equals 9 log 2. Well, put the 9 here, cancel the log, we just care about the inside, so we can see that AB has to be 2 to the 9th power, and of course, just worked out, we get 516, and this right here is the answer. Okay, for the second question, we have log base 2 of x is equal to log base 1 of 16, and xy is equal to 64, and we are going to figure this out. I think this is how I'm going to do it. Let me just work this out. Because we know this right here, we can write it as log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y, and then square the whole thing. And um, let's just go ahead and multiply this out. Then we will see it's this square, which is parentheses, log base 2 of x square. And then let me just add it with this square, which is log base 2 of y square. And we have to minus... 2 times this and that, so it's 2 log base 2 of x, and then log base 2 of y, like that, right? Hmm, now it's about the time for us to use our information so we can grab some numbers, right? <sighs> so you see though, this, this, this and that, they are in terms of log base 2, so it's a good idea to have log base 2. This is log base y, so I'm going to work this out. So, have a look. Right here, we know 
log base 2 of x, that will be equal to. Let me do the change of base formula right here with log base 2. So this is going to be log base 2 of 16 and then over log base 2 of y like this. And again, the reason I want to do that is because everything is in, log, in, in terms of log base 2. On top, this is nice. This is just nicely equal to 4. And then we have the over that, which is the log base 2 of y. And we can multiply this and that. And you see, first information, log base 2 of x times log base 2 of y. This is nicely equal to 4. Very, very nice. That's exactly what we have right here, isn't it? Hmm. But we don't really know log base 2 of x by itself though. So what else can we do? Well, I wish though, this is not to the second power, this is not to the second power, because if that's the case, we can just have this plus that, and we can combine them into log base 2 of x times y. That's very nice. And in fact, we can make that happen if I use my blue marker. This is how we can do it. Let's just complete the square right here. And to do so, just go ahead and add two of this and that, right? So two, log base two of x and log base two of y. Then this right here will be a perfect square. Of course, once you add, you will have to subtract immediately. So we pretty much will just end up with the following, right? So let's see. For all these three things, right? all these three things all together we get a perfect square and the perfect square is nicely equal to log base 2 of x and then add it with log base 2 of y and then square and this is just minus 4 log base 2 of x and then log base 2 of y and this right here is actually really nice because we know how to handle that Better yet, combine these two, we get log base 2 of xy. And then let's just go ahead and square that. And then minus all this part right here, we know it's 4 already. So this is just 4 times 4. And do we know what xy is? Yes, we totally do, right? So we know this right here is equal to 64 inside of log base 2. So 64 is 2 to what power? 6 power, right? So this right here, we can see that we will just have this equal to 6 because log base 2 of 64, we get 6. And then square that and then minus 16 and do this in your head. All in all, we end up with 20, right? Okay, here's the third question. Suppose both A and B are greater than 1 and A and B can be equal to each other. Then what's the maximum of this expression? What do you guys think? Let me tell you, the answer to this right here is equal to zero. And it might seem weird because, hmm, we are trying to find the maximum and everything seems so positive. How can this maximum be zero, right? But it is equal to zero. Let me show you. First, notice that this is A, that's A. So I think it's a good idea to just use the log property and we write it down like this. For the first one, we get log base A of A and then minus log base a of b and for this one i'll just put it down we have to add log base b of b and then minus log base b of a like that very nice huh now this right here is one this right here is also one so one plus one is two so here we have two very nice both of them are negative so i'll factor that out this and that though hmm I think let me just use the change of base formula. So we will see that this is equal to log b over log a. And there can be any base. Let me just use the same log for both of them. Right? And for this one, I will have plus because I factored a negative already. So we add. And I will use the log as well. This is log a over log b. Very nice. Hmm, so what exactly are we trying to do? We are trying to find the maximum of this expression. And notice, this and that, they are just the reciprocal of each other. 
there's actually a very nice way to find the minimum value of this. And why do we need a minimum? Because if this right here, if we can make this to be the minimum, notice we have a minus that. So the negative minimum will be the maximum. And that will give us the maximum of the original expression. So we want the minimum of this expression, right? Now, check this out. With all this condition, you will see that this and that are positive. And what we can do is we can use what we call the ANGM uh, inequality. And this is the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean, which says the following. Suppose A and B are non-negative, you can do the following. Well, let's just call the numbers to be A and B. A M means you just go ahead and add the numbers, divide it by two. That's the arithmetic mean. And for the geometric mean, you just multiply them and take the square root. I can promise you the inequality is going to be greater than or equal to. Right? Now, we'll take this as the capital A, we'll take this as the capital B, and just throw that in. So we'll see this is just log B over log A plus log A over log B, and then all over 2. This is greater than or equal to this right here, which is just the square root of this times that. And of course, you can see that it will be nicely equal to 1, right? And this is why I used the change of base formula earlier because this and that, this and that cancel each other out very nicely. Now you can see this over 2 is greater than or equal to 1. In another word, we can just multiply the 2 on both sides. So let me just write this down one more time because why not? This is going to be greater than or equal to 2. Very nice. So the minimal is actually equal to 2. Therefore, the answer to this question, as I told you already, is 2 minus 2. It's not because 1 minus 1, right? It's 2 minus 2. So the answer is equal to 0. And I think a lot of these math competition questions are really fun, but sometimes they can be also really hard. You just have to practice a lot. And leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions that you would like me to try out. So yeah, leave a comment down below. Anyway, as always, that's it. And leave a comment down below. Leave.